Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, today we uh, are going to talk about sporting regulations. Um, very often when we talk about sporting regulations, we think about penalty. Um, sporting penalty, the, uh, the stop and go, the, the, the grid positions. And in, in reality, there is a lot more to say about the sporting regulations. They are very much the backbone of how the sport is run. So we wanted to share with you today uh, a brief overview about uh, where we are now and where, where we go in the, in the futures. So unfortunately, the, the sport, like the rest of the world, had to uh, deal with the, uh, all the consequences of uh, the COVID-19 pandemic. And this is very much where uh, the regulations uh, started. The regulations we have now, they started a year and a half ago, when as a sport, we all met together with the federations, with the commercial right holder, with all the teams. Um, the world was stopped. Yeah, it was in, in, in March uh, 2020. The world was stopped and we, we sat together when we came back from, from Australia and we said, OK, how do we go forward from now? And, and uh, from there, um, there was a great sense of responsibility, uh, again, from the teams, from the, uh, the FIA, from F1. And, and, and Ferrari had a leading role in this sense of responsibility in, in accepting a, a number of um, cost cuts uh, to the uh, regulations and, and accepting a number of freeze uh, in the regulations so that the sport can be uh, more sustainable in a year where we, that we knew was going to be very, very difficult. So this is how we ended up having these famous frozen regulations uh, in, in 2020 with a, a car that we effectively could not develop. And that's how we went racing last year. And, and I think as a sport, it was a great achievement that we could come back to uh, uh, to um, an international stage, probably uh, uh, first than, than any, other, any other events that we managed to put together this 17 races calendar. Now, we are one year um, uh, after these, uh, these, uh, these big shocks that has been the, uh, the start of the pandemic. The regulations are now looking into the futures and, and we are trying to get our fans back closer to us. Uh, whether in, in, in public or whether uh, in front of their, of their uh, TV or of their screens. And, and there is a number of initiatives that again as a group we have been putting together to make sure the sports engage even more with, with the fans. One example of uh, a new sporting regulation that is going to be uh, a, a great news for the fan. We are going to try this year what we call here the uh, sprint qualifying format. So what it means is that during three races this year, the first one being in, in, in Silverstone, we are going to experiment a completely new um, weekend format. How is it going to work? Well, on Friday, we'll have only one free practice session instead of two today because uh, instead of the second free practice sessions, we are going to have already the qualifying uh, on Friday. The very same qualifying that we used to uh, watch uh, on Saturday afternoon, they are going to be brought one day uh, earlier and we are going to, to have our traditional qualifying sessions on Friday. What's happening after that? Well, you take the result of the qualifying sessions and that's going to be the starting grid of what we are going to call on Saturday the sprint qualifying. Effectively, it's a 100 kilometers race that is going to start with the order of the qualifying we have done on, on, uh, on Friday. And, and it's going to be that sprint qualifying or that sprint race uh, is going to be uh, uh, like uh, 100 kilometers flat out from our drivers because the uh, results of that sprint qualifying of that short race is going to be the starting grid of the traditional Grand Prix that will take place as normal on Sunday. So um, two starts in the weekend now, two mi one mini race, one main race. We keep the qualifying, so it's about adding some excitement for the fans and we are all very much looking forward to see how it's going to um, um, develop, how are we going to cope with these new uh, constraints as a team, how our drivers are going to adapt with uh, with, uh, with uh, these, um, these new challenges, but we think it's going to be very exciting and, and uh, we will uh, see each other after Silverstone race to see how it went. Uh, now next year, next year everything changes. Uh, we'll have um, a completely new car, uh, completely new regulations, probably the biggest change in, uh, in the last few decades. Um, 
uh, also um, uh, very um, important evolutions on our power unit with, with, greener, uh, with greener fuel. And all together, it's going to be uh, a jump in the unknown for us as a team, as manufacturers, uh, where uh, every, we will have to see how uh, each team made the most of this uh, fresh uh, piece of paper from which they had to uh, design their, their car from. So that's where we are going. Uh, again, for us, it's, uh, it's, um, it's a path that uh, was very close to our values, uh, with uh, trying to uh, put uh, our responsibility at the first place. It was also very much in sync with everything that we have done here at Ferrari, with our back-on-track projects in trying to keep our employees, our community safe. And it's very much with that uh, spirit that we have tried to contribute to uh, uh, to the evolution of the regulations for uh, hopefully for the best of the sport and for a better futures together. Thank you.